CataractCoach.com. A resident surgeon does case number 100. What's pretty good and what needs improvement? Let's watch. Now we sped the video up to three times normal speed. That's a good fill of viscoelastic. Now let's watch as the main incision is being made. Looks like a right eye sitting temporally. Fixation rings holding the eye. Here's our keratome. Looks like a 2.75 or 2.8 millimeter keratome. And the incision looks pretty good. Nice tunnel length, reasonable construction. I like it. Time for the capsorexis. Now there is some motion here on the patient. It's kind of amplified when we show the video at three times normal speed. Starting off the caps rex is here with a cystotome, that looks good. And switching over now to the forceps. We're showing the video at three times speed because the unedited video is about 25 minutes. And I know my viewers, especially the young ones, you can't sit through that. And so we've cut this down to about eight minutes going at high speed. And I think you can watch that for sure. That's a darn good looking capsule rexus. So again, a lot of movement here from the patient. Maybe the patient would benefit from more systemic sedation. A little bit of hydrodissection. Let's see if we see a good fluid wave. Uh, maybe that looks okay. Don't see a great wave just yet. And trying again. Oh, that's good. Beautiful wave. Nucleus partially prolapsed out of the bag. And then looks like it's being put in uh, the capsular bag. That looks good more viscoelastic, and rotating the nucleus. I like those. All good maneuvers. Let's see the technique of nucleus division. So here comes a FACO tip, purple sleeve, so 2.8 millimeter, 2.75 millimeter incision, and cleaning up some of the anterior cortical material. So far, so good. For case 100, I like it. If you're an experienced surgeon and you've done more than 1,000 cases, you don't need to watch this video. Although, I'll tell you, even I learned something from watching these videos. But if you're a newer surgeon who's done fewer than a few hundred cases, you better learn a lot from this. This is an important metric for you to know where you should be at case 100. So it looks like a central groove is being created in the nucleus. That looks pretty reasonable. Nice central groove, there it is. Remember the M&M &M shape of a, a human lens of a cataract. Thicker in the middle and thinner in the periphery. So when you make this groove, make sure it's a little deeper in the center and a lot more shallow in the periphery. Now the second instrument is going in the groove, and let's see, does this crack or separate out into halves? Looks pretty good and good propagation of the, the, the crack. I like it. It's rotating the nucleus around, and let's see what's going to happen now. Another groove, or we're going to do a chop. And looks like... I'm trying to bring the nuclear piece up. Looks like perhaps a stop and chop. Again, the eye is being pushed into the nasal canthus a little bit. We want to work on that. And a groove, another groove, that's fine. So this looks like a four quadrant divide and conquer technique. Totally reasonable to do at case 100. This looks great. And then continuing that groove that's being sculpted here. That looks pretty good. And then Again, there's a lot of patient movement here. So it's not the fault of the resident surgeon, but I'd encourage the anesthesiologist to be a little more generous with that systemic sedation. The patient's probably received some good local anesthetics, such as a block. However, systemically, the patient's still moving his head or her head around. Here's the first quadrant of the nucleus is brought up to the iris plane. This looks pretty good. So, so far, what have we seen in this case that we liked? I think the draping's great. The incision was pretty good. The capsorexis was very good. Hydrodissection was carried out nicely. And then the divide and conquer technique's pretty good as well. Now here's the last piece of the nucleus and that's just chopped. So this is uh, grooved twice to make two halves, then to get one half and make it into two quadrants. And the second half was then just chopped. That's a nice way of transitioning into learning Faco chop. I think the next move for this resident would be to switch to doing all cases with a stop and chop technique. And once that's really mastered, then switching over to doing just a direct chop or a quick chop technique. But that looks great, removing all the rest of these little nuclear bits. There are a couple little pieces left there. You can get those out with the Faco probe or the IA probe. So lights off here for a minute. Looks like that's being done during the exchange to the IA tip. 
And that's a very reasonable approach to avoid the light toxicity. Here comes the IE tip. And then those little pieces of uh, nuclear chips can be just pushed into the port. That looks great. I also do like this polymer or plastic tip on the IE probe. That way you don't have any metal coming in contact with the capsule. Clean those pieces up, aspirate them down. Looks very good. So good technique here. So I think this resident is well on his way or her way to becoming an accomplished surgeon. It just takes time. And then building on every subsequent case. So now cleaning up the cortex, let's see the technique. So doing a central stripping, that does definitely work. Maybe next time switch to more of a circumferential technique as I tend to prefer in my cases. I think that it becomes a little bit more efficient. And that looks great. That's cleaned up beautifully. Now, should you polish the anterior capsule rim? You certainly can, and this resident's doing a good job of that. You know, if you're a resident who's done less than 1,000 cases, no one's going to fault you for doing uh, less than 100% capsule polishing. Because in truth, we've seen many studies that show it really has a minimal benefit in terms of developing posterior capsule opacity. So capsule bag was filled with viscoelastic. And then let's see our lens decision. Looks like a single piece acrylic lens going in that injector. And let's see how that's delivered. Fixating the eye, I like that technique. Delivering the lens, going in the capsule bag. Notice how the eye is staying in primary. It's a really good job. The resin's doing a good job, very nice job indeed. So rotating the lens a little bit now, getting both haptics in the capsule bag. Look at the overlap of the rexus on top of the optic. I like it. It's looking really good. Now one thing that's a little interesting here, can remove all the viscoelastic from the eye going behind the lens. You may notice that there are a few small pieces of nuclear uh, chunks or, or chips in the anterior hyaloid face. You see those? Those are not behind the IOL optic in the bag. They're behind the posterior capsule. And that can happen in cases where there are loose zonules and some of the tiny little cataract wash as we take out the cataract. Those little fragments can go in the anterior hyaloid face. Those will absorb with time. Not such a big deal. And that does look great. Sealing up the incisions. I'll take it. Beautiful job. So in summary, very nice surgery. Good incision. Good draping. Good capsular rexus. I like the nucleus division technique. Time for you to graduate to doing stop and chop and then hopefully move on to just pure phaco chop. And also tell your anesthesiologist next time to be a little more generous with the systemic sedation. Thanks for submitting your video. It really was great, and you're going to do a beautiful job in the future. Check out cataractcoach.com, our teaching website. You can submit your video. We'll review it. I'll let you know exactly where you stand, what could be done better, and what's pretty good already. Check it out.